Hey guys and welcome back to another Python tutorial. This is going to be part two of the budget tracker application. So basically we're going to be continuing the program we started in the first tutorial. So if you haven't already watched the first video, I recommend you highly do. I'll be linking that in the description as well as right about now. So without further ado, let's get into it. Let me just run the application to show you what the current functionality is. We've got a very simple UI. Um, we, had, we can enter a date. Um, description of item we're purchasing or um, adding to our income and then the amount as well as whether it's an income or expense so let's just say this is an expense for gym we add this it adds it on we can click on view entries and then we basically have a nice and clean ui which basically shows us the entries now bear in mind that all of this data is being handled uh, by pandas and it's being stored in a csv file as well so if i were to completely stop running this code um, right now and then rerun it we'll be able to see the exact same data uh, without losing that data because we're actually storing it in a sort of data file in a csv so um what we can see here is our UI is kind of lacking a bit of functionality. So what I'd like to do in this tutorial is basically show you guys how we can add an edit and a delete entry button for each of the entries that we have. As it stands right now, we can't edit or delete any of the entries that we make. So we're going to be adding that functionality. Now, first things first, what we want to do is a bit of pre-prep. Um, so if you scroll down to your view entries function, uh, we have a top variable, which basically is the second window that opens up and shows us all the entries. Now we want to make this sort of global and have access to it overall. So we're going to assign, uh, instead of doing a local variable called top, we're going to do self.top. And then we have to update all the references to top as well. So I believe there's only three of them. Um, so I'm sure one, two, okay, yep. So if once you've done this, that basically makes this available to the rest of the object, then we can begin with doing the actual sort of bones and meat of this code. So in this function over here, what this function does is creates a new window uh, based on the existing root window, and then creates a text element in, Tic uh, in Tikinta, which is basically a scrollable um, text entry. It's like an entry, but multi-line, so it covers multiple um, sort of elements. And then it packs it in the middle of the screen and for each uh, sort of row of data in the data frame that we have which is in the csv file um, we basically insert a new row of text with the date description amount and type now what we want to do along with inserting just the you know um inserting just the row of text is we want to add a button for edit and a button for delete for each of these respective um, text entries so to do that, what we want to do is actually create the elements first. So I'm going to create an element called edit button, and then we'll assign that to tk.button. Um, now you have to pass, because we're going to have to place it somewhere, we're going to say we're going to place it on self.top, because that's where we want it to be. The text is going to be edit, and the command is going to be, um, we're going to create this function in a second, but it's going to be self.top edit entry now what we need here is basically the index as well so for each of the rows we need the index of the item which we're going to use as a reference later on to edit or delete those rows in the actual data file because we need to make these changes to the data file so we have our index here as we iterate through each of the rows so what we want to do is pass that index to our edit entry function to do that, what you'd have to do is incorporate an anonymous function or a lambda function here, which is going to be lambda, and then i is going to be a parameter to that lambda function. We're going to basically equals that to the index. So i is basically going to be set to the index. And then what we're going to say is we want to run the oops, we want to run the self.edit entry function with the i parameter. So essentially all you're doing here is saying that every time someone clicks on this edit button function, you wanna give it a command uh, to run the edit entry um, function. And when you run the edit uh, entry function, if it is for the first row, it will pass the index zero. If it is for the fifth row, it will pass the index uh, four, because obviously we start at index zero. Cool, so that's a bit of logic for you guys. Um, Along with the edit button, we are also going to have to create the delete button, of course, because we're going to cover that too. So I think I'll just copy and paste this down here and update a few things. So instead of edit button, we do delete button, change the text from 
edit to delete. Uh, the lambda will basically stay the same. And the logic is pretty much the same, guys. Um, the only thing that sort of changes is the function name and what it does. Because even when we're deleting, we're going to need the reference to the item we want to delete in the data file, right? So if we want to delete the first row, we're going to need index 0. And if we want to delete the fifth row, we're going to need index 4. Which is why we have to pass that to both functions regardless. So what we can do next is actually um, place these items because right as as it stands right now, we've only created these created this ele these elements and they're not been placed on our UI. So we need to actually place them. Now in a normal scenario, what you do is do button .pack to put it in the center of the screen or button .grid to place it somewhere on the grid. But what we want to do instead is we want to place it inside this uh, text element that we have which is why we're going to have to use the um, window create function. So since we already have a text element, which is a multi-line sort of text entry thing, we're going to do text.windowcreate, which will let us basically place widgets like buttons or entries onto a element. So we do text.windowcreate and we type in pk.end. And then um, basically what we're going to need to tell it is where uh, what we want to place onto the um, onto the text uh, onto the text widget so what we want to place first is the edit button and then after that we'll basically do the same thing to place our um, delete button onto the text widget as well so this should basically nicely uh, fit our buttons onto the screen and then what we will also want to do is insert a blank line after all of this. Um, this will basically ensure that the buttons have reasonable space between them and the next entry. So let's run this just to give you a gist of what we've done so far, because all we've done so far is a few UI changes. Um, delete button is not defined. Oh, it's called button delete here. So let me just change that to um, delete button. Now, if we rerun this, it should work just fine, I believe. Apologies for that. Um, here we are, view entries. And boom. as you can see, for each of the entries, we now have an edit and delete button. If you obviously click them, we'll get an error because we haven't created the functions that are assigned to these buttons just of yet. So let's just add another entry as well, just to show you how the added, you know, blank line at the end uh, adds a benefit. So I'm going to do 24080, description, um, Salary amount, let's just say 1050 income. Let's add this entry in. Okay, view entries. And if you look at it now, the added blank line is basically this. It's a space between the two, which makes it look quite nice. Now, the UI is basically ready so far. Um, what we need to do next is basically um, do the function for the edit feature. Now, what we're going to do for the edit feature is every time someone clicks on the edit feature, we want to have a new window pop up and then we'll basically take all the data that's already in the entry and then put it in sort of entry fields so um, that the user can then update those entry fields and save them. It'll make a lot more sense once we start doing it. So let's get right into it. Thanks for watching this video so far. I'd like to quickly shout out GoLogin, which is a company that lets you stay anonymous while browsing different accounts online and manage your private accounts. So many of you guys are active online, developing businesses on the internet, promoting yourself on social networks, etc. And with a large number of accounts comes obviously the inconvenience and risks that you may get confused by dozens of accounts like Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, etc. At the same time, you're obviously constantly risking important data that you store in your browser in case you get banned on certain applications and you lose everything. There is a all-in-one solution to this actually, which is called GoLogin. It's a secure platform for managing all your online accounts, which will have a lot of ton of security features like a unique digital footprint for each of your accounts, secure cloud storage under key and lock, digital footprint control through customization of settings, centralized access allocation for the team, etc. 
Now, if you guys would like to support the video because this video is affiliated, uh, I would highly recommend you guys to click the link in the description and try out for yourself the free trial of GoLogin or purchase it if it supports your needs. Thank you. So what we want to do first is obviously we said we would create a edit entry and a delete entry function. So let's do that. Let's start with the edit entry function first. So we'll do diff edit entry and then we'll obviously need to do self first because uh, we are in an object and then we can create a new parameter for index because we need to have the index in order to actually edit this data in the data frame. So we're going to need access to our actual data frame here and data frame is just the CSV file that all of us data is being stored in currently. So we're going to do global DF. Now if you don't have any clue of what this means, I highly suggest once again watching the first tutorial because that was basically explained in there. It's basically at the start of the application, we read in all of the data from a CSV and it's stored in a, in a variable called DF. And then any changes we make throughout the code, we use that variable as like a global to, to make sure we have like shared, shared access to that data frame. Cool. So that's enough about that. Um, let's actually start working on our UI for the edit entry. So first of all, we need a new screen. So we'll do self.edittop equals dk.top uh level and then we'll base this on self.root so we're basically saying we want to create a new window and we want to create that window based on the initial um application that we made now we'll add a title to that as well title and then make that edit uh entry that's just going to be the title of the application now on this window itself what we want to do is add several different um entry boxes which are going to be pre-populated with the uh, data from the entry that the user is trying to edit so then they can change the values click on save and then we can make an in-place change in the data file itself so let's start with the date entry self so edit date equals tk dot entry and then we basically tell it where to place so we're going to place it on the edit top screen then we need to now in entries you can also insert uh data directly into it without the user having to do anything so we can give it a default set of data which is basically going to be dot insert and then now we're going to say we want to insert from the first character uh, of the entry field and what we want to insert is remember how i said we have the df is basically a csv file so we want to do df dot at and what app basically does it lets you have access to different rows uh, of data based on the index so now that we know which uh, which index we're trying to edit we basically access the row uh, of data from that index and then we basically do comma uh, and date to access the date column because this will basically return all of the columns for the first row and we only want the date field obviously in this case we don't want all the other ones we just want the date field which is why we put in date and then this will return all of the columns so um basically what this will look like i'll show you in a second because we actually need to place it on the screen we're just going to do edit date dot pack to place it on the screen which will basically put it right in the center of the screen now if you run this um we'll do view entries comes up edit and what basically will show up is something like this. Uh, it's an entry field, like I said, and all you have is basically the uh, the data which was in the date field. Now we can obviously edit this, which is the whole point of this. And then when we click on save, it will save the, save the information. So let's close this off. And if you try doing edit for the second one, um, just to prove that the uh, application works correctly, this is what we will get. We'll get 240806, which is the second one. So perfectly fine so far. Let's basically do the same thing for the rest of our data field. So we've done it for date. We now have to do it for description, amount, and type. So we'll do edit description equals entry on the top. And then we insert uh and basically all that changes here is we want the description value instead of the date value uh and then we're going to pack this in the middle of the screen 
then we can basically do the same thing again just copy and paste essentially this one is going to be for the uh amount um put it on the top Take this and instead of description we're going to want the amount uh the next one is going to be for the type i believe yep that's basically the last one um and then copy and paste it there change that to type because we want to access the type column and then we place the type in the middle of the screen cool so let's run this quickly to see what this look like and then we can proceed with creating the final save button which will kind of add the finishing touch to this so as you can see i clicked on the edit button for the first entry and we get all the data from the first entry 2401 gym expense and then obviously i can go ahead and add something like edited and then when i have the save button i'd click it and then i'd expect it to basically update the csv file and refresh this window so to do that we actually need a save button first so let's create a save button uh save button equals tk dot button we need to tell it where we want it to be placed we want it to be placed on edit top uh self dot edit top uh and then the text is going to be called save now just like uh the other buttons for edits and deletes we need to assign this a command right so this is going to have to be redirected to another function so we're going to assign it to a command going to do lambda again because this function is going to need access to the index once again and we're going to create a new function called save edit and pass it the index of the item that we're editing so this is going to be um, basically following the same steps that we did previously but in this function we're actually going to take all of the data that the user enters in these uh, new edit fields and then replace the existing data with that basically now, once we have the save button, we simply do dot pack, and we should get something like this. Uh, let me just share with you one second, because this pops up on my second screen, and the windows are really tiny, so I have to usually extend them first. Okay, so this is what it looks like. When we click on the save button, what it should do is take the data from this and replace the entry with that data. So, how do we do that, you might say? Well, a good place to start would actually be by creating the save edit function. It should be pretty simple, so just stick with me, guys. So we create the save entry fun save edit function, and then the first parameter is always going to be self because it's inside an object. Second parameter is basically going to be the index that we're trying to um, update within the CSV file. So, like I said before, um, what you could do to get data from specific rows in a csv file is df.at right so we're going to be using similar methodology here as well so first off what you want to do is type in global df so that you have access to the data frame value here and then what you want to do next is type in df.at then the index so basically the row that we're trying to edit and then for all the values we're just going to replace them uh with the new uh, updated values so this is the existing value in the data frame we're basically going to try and update that with whatever the user entered in these entry fields so we're going to do self dot edit date which is this entry field right here uh, where the user will up, uh, update the date and then dot get to get the new value and we can basically copy and paste the same thing so first we do it for a date then we do it for description um, description uh then we do it for amount edit amount and then lastly we do it for like the type so quite a bit of repetition as long as you understand the concept it's quite easy to get around this and then basically once we do all of that what we're going to do is save the csv so what this will do is go ahead and make that change because um, we're basically looking at the data frame that we have and then this row for this column we're updating it with whatever the user has entered so now that the changes have actually been made in the memory of the computer we have to save those changes to the file itself so we're going to do df.2csv 
and then we're going to call it records.csv and set index to false because we don't want an index column to be saved there. And once that's done, we can do a nice little message to the user to show them that um, the data is updated. So we'll just do success um, ng update. Perfect. Now, what we want to also do after this <laughs> is once the edit has been made, you obviously want to close down all the windows that the user doesn't need anymore, right? So I'll show you what that means in a second. Let's just run this first. Um, go here, view entries. We've got two entries here. Let's just update the second entry. Uh, give me a second to bring this over. I'm going to change this to edited. Um, change salary to... edit it as well and then go ahead and save that click ok uh, now if we click on view entries again we can see that the stuff that we put edited on um, basically says edited now so the date says edited and the salary as well I believe we also missed out on Oh, so I think there was a typo there. So if you change this to amount, uh, I forgot to pack the amount uh, to the screen, which is why we weren't seeing the amount there. We do view entries again. And then obviously this still stays in place because we've made the changes. Now if we bring this window over, we should basically have the income as well, which is perfect. So I can add edited to this as well. Click save it says successfully saved click ok close that down now obviously this doesn't update straight away which is why what i want to do is close those windows that we don't need and then reopen this window so it shows the refresh data but if i click on view entries again we have edited 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 and obviously we didn't edit the last one that's why it's not edited so let's make those changes um let's close down the windows that we don't need so first of we close the edit top window because we don't really need that that's the window with all the entries that the user updates the info in. Then we close down the top, um, which is the um, which is the basically the screen where all of the entries are currently showing, which are out of date. So we close that down, and then we click on view entries. Well, not click on, but run the view entries function, which will basically rerun the view entries function and that will be showing the up-to-date data from the csv file which is basically what we need in this case so let's run this again and if i do view entries uh what i'm going to do is obviously this doesn't look great with the edited label so i'm going to do edit and then i'm going to just get rid of the edited labels from each of the things space click on save it says entry updates successfully click ok and if you i'm not sure if you noticed but all the windows we don't need have closed and it has now opened uh, the view entries uh, window again by itself with the updated data which is perfect cool so um that's basically the edits feature done now the only thing left to do is the delete feature which should be a lot more straightforward than the edit because all we need to do is delete the row and then refresh the entries window so we created a function earlier uh, up here called entry delete we gave a reference but we didn't create the function so let's do that so define entry delete i believe that's what it was called oh no delete entry uh and what we're going to pass here is self first because it's an object and we need the index as well so we can actually delete the row at that index now we do global df so we have access to the data frame and then as simple as this df.drop index in place equals true or you can do um df equals df.drop whichever way you prefer so what this will basically do is it's going to drop the whole row of data in whatever index you provide it with and then just to be on the safe side, we're going to reset the index while setting drop to true. Set in place to true. And now we actually save this uh, entirely new data frame with the deleted row 
uh, into the file uh, and overwrite all the changes so that it's permanently saved as well. Now we can do a quick message box uh, to show the user that we've actually deleted the row. So success and then entry deleted successfully. And then what we need to do next is we destroy the current um, top window because the data is going to be outdated. Um, it's not been updated yet. And then we basically run the view entries function again, which will display the refreshed entries in the window. Run this again. And hopefully we'll have this without any errors. View entries. Actually, I'll make a new record just for this one. So I'll do fake, fake, fault, fake again. Um, view entries. Oh, I forgot to add it. Uh, add entry, view entries. We should have three now. I have, yep, yeah, we have the fake one. If we click on delete now. It says deleted successfully. And I'm not sure if you saw that, but it closed the window that it had open. And it's basically created a new, well, run the view entries again so it can get the updated one. Let's delete this one as well. Click OK. And it has done the same thing again. We have only one entry now. Let's close the application and rerun it actually to see if it will retain that one record. And it does. So we basically got quite a robust application at this point in time where we're able to add our records, edit our records, as well as delete our records. So pretty good job for following along so far. Hope I was able to help you guys. And um, there's just one more thing that I'd like to do in this application, which would be to uh, create reports by month, which will show sort of how much you spent um, and how much you put in the account, as well as your savings, uh, which is what I'd like to do in the final tutorial for this series. After this, I'll probably do a few series on Matplotlib and visuals, and then we can do a few exciting projects with those as well. Like always, guys, I hope you have enjoyed the tutorial and I was able to help you. If you have any ideas, feel free to leave them in the comments, and I shall see your beautiful faces in the next tutorial. Peace.